Howdy folks, Little John, uh, and it's time for another whiskey jar. Now, today I'm not making anything, I'm not specifically trying or tasting anything, but I, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a couple of drinks. But what I want to chat about is um, the concept and the thinking around how you should drink uh, your whiskey. Um, specifically today I'm looking at bourbon, but that's it, it, the same for, you know, for the Scotch whiskey, Canadian whiskey, it doesn't really make any difference. The premise and the sort of argument works the same all over. Um, so what I'm referring to is what is thrown out there by a lot of, uh, let's say, connoisseurs, um, people who are in the know or believe they're in the know, um, a lot of, yeah, a lot of bourbon channels. Um, over the year of years, I've watched a um, recent years. I got back into the into me bourbon quite yeah, a bit more seriously than you know, than just buying a bottle and chug it. They get drunk, um, actually enjoying it and. You know, ex experiencing the whole range. Um, I've been watching a lot of videos and a lot of channels that are around you know, whiskey and tasting and you know, and how it all, how it all goes. Uh, and by and large you come across this idea of with, well it is, it's, it's outright, it's, it's snobbery um, and what I find is that a lot of the channels try to pretend that they aren't being that way um, in the way they bring things across. Um, specifically, and what I'm doing here, uh, about how you actually drink your whiskey. Um, now, by and large, you get all these, you get these channels. Um, I'm not gonna name any particular channels, but, you know, for the most part, it's generally there's two guys on the channel. They'll sit down, they they try some taste some stuff, and you know, and basically they want to bang on all the time about the fact that you should just drink your whiskey straight up, pour it from the glass, from your bottle into a glass. Um, in, in this case, a bottle of Woodford's Reserve, um, decent, well-respected bourbon. Uh, certainly not. Um, you know, would be top shelf on most, you know, plenty of bars, um, middle shelf on, on some, but, you know, well respected bourbon. And they tell you, that's all you should be doing. A little bit of that in a glass and just drinking that. And the reason being, so you can fully experience all the flavours, you know, and the nuances and, the, you know, all the different characters that are there. You know, and you get to like, smell them and experience them more. You know, and you get to enjoy them in the pure form. So they say, that's the way you should drink it. But it's not the only way. And they certainly don't, you know, um, you know, that's one way you can drink it. And one, one thing they, they don't like you doing, don't seem like you doing, is sticking a chunk of ice in there. Um, they start screaming all sorts of things. Oh, I said, it waters it down, it changes the taste and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, it, it is going to water it down a little bit. It is going to affect the taste. Um, for me, it cuts back the burn. Um, it makes the bourbon a little bit more approachable. Now I can still get plenty of flavour out of that. There's not as much that feeling that you're drinking petrol, which some people get. Now, I enjoy drinking my whiskey straight. Um, I'm not, not saying that that's not way how you should do it. You certainly should experience any whiskey you're drinking 
straight before you do anything else with it. Um, so, it, so you do actually get to enjoy what it, taste of what it's like and how it's meant to be. From there, what you want to do is exactly the point of this video. A lot of these videos want to say that you should drink your whiskey however you, whichever way you enjoy it, whatever way you like to drink it, is the best way to drink it. Uh, and then nine times out of ten, of course, they'll end up coming back around to the point where, ah, oh, yeah, you should just be drinking it straight. So that's sort of the extent of what, you know, what they might get away with, what they're happy to let you do. Um, yeah, you know, they'll start talking about cocktails. Um, give me a second. Yeah, they start talking cocktails, and when they're talking cocktails. They're not necessarily re always referring to, you know, a straight up cocktail, an, an old fashioned or a whiskey sour, you know, things like that. Um, but that is the that is the main premise of that of the cocktail sort of thing. Um, and what you you'll normally get is that uh, they don't recommend you go for this sort of thing, you know, this higher quality. If you're just knocking around in, in, in the cocktails, uh, again, depending on what it is. But where they have a real issue is your average Joe, you know, table drinker who wants to grab himself a cheapish bottle of bourbon. Um, now, not that here in Australia bourbon is cheap in any, for any sort of product. Um, and to me, these are both a, these are both a good drink. Uh, but in the context of the other, these are yeah, fairly cheap bourbon. Uh, you knock them back fairly easy. So, if you want to grab, yeah. Your bottle of eight-year-old Dickel, which costs you somewhere around 50 bucks here in Australia. You pop a cube ice in the glass. You throw yourself in a little bit of a dab. And... And you get into it. And they're like, oh, that's alright, that's fine, that's okay, we'll let you, because it's a cheap whiskey, you can do that. But... By and large, Joe Public does that to his bourbon. He throws coke in it. <laughs> Shock and horror. Oh my god, what have you done? Yeah. You know, these guys are screaming blue murder. You think you've gone out, you know, and burnt down the Jack Daniels distillery. You know, buddy. You put some bourbon in the coke. Um, this is how most people drink their bourbon, I hate to tell you. But that, that's, that's alright, they go, okay, right, I'm going to do it, that's alright. You're using the cheap bourbon, we can, we can, um, we can wear that. That's okay, you can do that. Yeah. Um, and they knock you down to this category of, you know, you're not even, you're not even a person who likes whiskey. You're drinking all of this. You're not a bourbon drinker. You're someone who likes Coke that's got a bourbon flavour. Um, well, if that's the case, you know, stick my hand up because um, I'm quite quite happy to sit back and suck on, you know, some Coca-Cola that's got a you know, nice uh, George Dickel flavour. No problem at all. Okay. Does the, does that bourbon taste like it does straight out of the bottle? Of course it doesn't. 
but it still has a flavour and a taste. And it's different to that. And it's different to the Woodford Reserve. You know? I stick some coke in there. Just a little bit in there. Suddenly I've, I've, I've desecrated a bloody quality bourbon. Yeah. They'll be coming around lynch. They'll be looking to drag me firstborn child out of the house and lynching them. Yeah. And again, okay, it's a bourbon flavoured coke, but it's a different bourbon flavour because it's a different bourbon. And I can enjoy the differences in those flavours when I'm drinking it. Um, I'm not worried if it offends you that I've done that. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, um, that's quite often how I'll do it. Not too worried. But where they really have an issue is when you step up into the quality, in, you know, into the upper end of the market, into the good stuff, into the single barrels and, you know, the aged stuff. Yeah. Bottle of work wild turkey rare breed at the moment in Australia selling for about hundred about $110 a bottle. Um, for, your, for your standard everyday range, this is yeah, this is getting up there. Well, so I'll order exactly how I exactly how they tell me I should. Keep the purists happy. I can breathe in its lovely bouquet and its vanilla tones and its pepper and its slight hints of chocolate Ooh, and, and apple. Yeah, I, I can do all that. And I can taste it. I, and I can appreciate doing that. But that's a bloody damn fine whiskey. Um, it's a better whiskey than these other ones. But again, better. Where, where does the definition of better come from? If I'm, better is a case of my preference. Um, just because this is twice the price or more of these other, of this safe say the Dickel or the Jack Daniels White, and it's stronger percentage and it's been aged for longer, all the rest of it, doesn't mean it's better. It's just different. So, I like that better that better whiskey. It's nice straight. I've got to say. I might stick a little bit of ice in it. I'm sipping again. Yum, that's nice. But here we go. Let's Yeah, let's really put it amongst these bloody people. Um a little bit of coke. That, ideally, just for those who want to know, is how little John prefers to drink bourbon. One third bourbon, two thirds coke, a chunk of ice. Short. Still got plenty of the bourbon, bourbon punch there. Just enough coke to sweeten it up and take away the burn. And you can sit and drink those all night long and not get overpowered by the the alcohol and the burn and the fumes and stuff that goes with drinking straight whiskey. Um, that's it. I've got no problem sitting down and drinking, as I said, a little bit of little bit of straight whiskey when you're having just a little bit. At the end of the day, you know, a small glass. If I'm sitting down <coughs> for the night, I'm having a drink. Um, I could be looking at sitting and drinking for another, yeah, for four or five hours from the point where I start drinking bourbon. I normally start on beer and I work up to the work up to the spirits. And once I'm there, I stay there. Uh, so I will start there on that fairly strong, yeah, bourbon and coke. Because I can drink that for hours, 
with no problem at all. But I can't sit there and drink straight whiskey for that amount of time. I just can't do it. Um, there's probably people that can. Maybe you can, good on you. But I can't. So I mix it. And I'm happy to do that. And I'm not going to say anything bad to anybody who wants to do that. That's say you want to drink it, then drink it like that. I'm also not going to say anything bad to somebody who wants to take the dearest bourbon in my collection and add a generous amount of cake to it. And say to me, hey little John, that's bloody nice bourbon. Because for someone who drinks it like this all the time, they can appreciate the differences between different brands. They notice the taste difference. My mum's a perfect example. My mum drinks bourbon. I buy a good quality bourbon every so often. Stepfather buys a bourbon. Ah, uh, and she drinks it with Coke. But she appreciates the differences, as I do. No problem at all. So if you're at home, you're drinking bourbon, your friends over, and they want a bourbon, don't be a fuck. Don't be a fucking snob. Don't be a wanker. If you want, if you're gonna get out the, if you want to get out the good bourbon and, yeah, and, and let people drink it, then get it out and just let them fucking drink it. If you don't want them to drink your good bourbon because you're gonna, because they're gonna put coke in it, give them a fucking cheap bottle. When I have parties here, you've seen the recently the video with the, the brew cave. The bourbons all behind the, the whiskies are all behind the bar. If I'm having a party, I will put two bottles of whiskey, two bottles of scotch, two bottles of bourbon, and generally a bottle of bottle of rum, and maybe a, a vodka if I've got one. Out on the out on the sideboard that anybody can access, can have access to. Drink as much of that as I like, and. Yeah, it'd be that, it'd be the dicku, it might be a bit of, might be a bottle of wild turkey or I've got I think I've got some hogs there at the moment. <coughs> but whatever it is, I'm happy for them to drink that many quantities they want. Night goes on, I'm having a if I'm talking with people and I want to sit there and have a, and I want to have a nice bourbon with somebody because they've taken a bit of an interest. And I'll pull out Yeah, the wild turkey, the rare breed or a J D single barrel. You know, pull out something decent. Even the Woodfords, or Makers 46, got that in there. Yeah. Pull out something decent and encourage them by, if they're a Coke drinker, by making a strong one. So they can taste it without actually burning their throat out, because that's what you'll do to people. And if you're trying to encourage someone to try some of your nice whiskies and you'd like to you know, have a couple of glasses with someone, Burning their, forcing them to burn their throat out because they don't drink whiskey straight doesn't get you or them anywhere. Uh, you're just wasting your fucking time and you're wasting your spirit. It's far better off to pour someone a, a normal standard bar strength bourbon and coke with your wild turkey rare and have them enjoy it than to pour them a straight shot of something half the price and then struggling to drink it because they're not going to enjoy it. They'll enjoy that, and they'll have another, they'll have another, and you'll have some good times, you'll have a chat, you'll have some laughs, yeah. You yeah, might be a bit seedy in the morning, but you'll have had a good night, and that person has learned something. Maybe they'll try a different bourbon next time they're drinking. Who knows, maybe they won't. But that's me, little job for today. Now, just to finish off, just a really Irk the snobs. Put them all together. Get that up here. Little John. Till I see you again. Comments, questions down the bottom. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down there. This is crazy shit we do. Come along for the ride. It's good to have you with me. So anyway, Little John. Till I see you again. Good brewing. Nothing wrong with that.